woman, for her price is far above rubies. Proverbs 31, 10. This morning, speakers are delivering messages on biblical mothers for this Mother's Day. My message for today's mother is, you are no different from the mothers of old. Children still come the same way. Meals still need preparing. Teething still takes place. Husbands still stubborn, and the list goes on and on. But remember the faith of your earlier sisters, their faith in God, their faith in Jesus, their faith in a brighter day. How is your faith today? Is it well with you? Do you see a brighter day? As God was with Hannah, Sarah, Esther, and Marion, and so many others, so he is with you. Be steadfast in his love and all you do. Jesus has not forsaken you. A brighter day awaits us all. One writer said, joy cometh in the morning. Joy, mothers, joy. All that you have endured, joy cometh. Yes, joy cometh to the mothers. Until then, rest in his promises, in his Holy Spirit, in his love. November 26, 2000. Micah 4, 7, uh, rather 7, 18 tells us uh, basically how to live with ourselves. Living with others can be a problem, but sometimes living with ourselves it can be a greater problem. In fact, if we cannot live with ourselves, it is doubtful whether others can live with us either. What is the secret of getting along with yourself? Do you have to live with regrets of self-condemnation? Of course not. Your faith in Jesus Christ can make you into the kind of person you really want to live with. I don't know what is robbing you of your personal peace and satisfaction. There may be something in your life right now that is making it difficult for you to live with yourself. Perhaps it is regret. You feel that you have wronged a loved one or that you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Perhaps it is sin that the past is haunting you. Perhaps you are weeping over lost opportunities and you're wondering how different life would have been if only, if only. Maybe you have failed somewhere along the line and that failure stabs you in the heart every time you think about it. I have good news for you today though. Jesus knows all about the problems and wants to solve them for you. You see, when you turn yourself over to him, he completely washes away your past, every sin, every mistake, every foolish act. In fact, he promises to forget our past and never to hold it against us. April 29th, 2001. Then shall I know even as also I am known. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. You know, life is full of mysteries. Again and again, the bewildered spirit asks why. And to many of our questions, there is no answer. It has not pleased God to explain all his ways to us here and now. Elihu said to Job, he giveth not an account for his matters. Job 13, 33, 13. But faith counts on his infinite love and wisdom and knows that someday all will be made plain. And in the light of his presence, we shall get the answers to all the questions that we have and that have so perplexed us. Then we shall know the hidden reasons for every trial, every sorrow, and we shall see that there was a needs be for all his dealings with us. We may be sure that when we see everything from the divine standpoint, we shall be able to praise him for all that now seems so bewildering. Oh, Father, please help us to have patience and to know that we'll understand it better by and by. The season of reflection, the 
anything of life. Yes, life has its sunset eyes, the twilight season. The dim eyes, the silver lock, and the fever step indicate that the closing period of the earthly existence has arrived. How rapid has been the flight of time? How near must be the approach of eternity? The evening is the time for reflection. And I shall remember all the way the Lord of our God will be seen for years in the world. Always is the most appropriate season for the consideration of the past. But may the five more pleasure to power the real state of things from your heart. Ask God himself to be your teacher. Make this your prayer. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And if there be any wicked way in me, lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139, 23. The retrospect is coming. Yet it leads to hope and peace and salvation, both to the troubled Christian and to the penitent sinner, the cheering annunciation of the gospel, from all our sins. Looking back should be combined with looking forward. The weary pilgrim who recalls with mingled sorrow and gladness the events that have occurred during his journey will also think of the rest and the welcome that wait him and his happy heart, the Christian father, that even is closing in around him, loves to let his imagination dwell upon the many rooms in his father's house, where a place is being prepared for him. July 7th, 2002. Amos 3.2. You only have I known. Christians need to develop their powers of discernment to work out spiritually as they might physically in a gym. If I know that I might be acting contrary to the will of God and not even know it, what steps can I take to prepare that? I can stop filling my prayers with this shopping up list of let me go here, let me go there, let me get this job, I need a healing. All these things that arise from my obsessions with myself and instead do some listening to God. God has chosen us as people to whom God wishes to communicate. But that's going to be difficult if the level of our spiritual chatter is, is such that God can't get a word in his mouth. God will speak to us in prayer. You don't know what to say? Then say that. Say, I don't know how to talk to you. And then wait. Mixed with a jumble of thoughts that crowd your mind will be a calm voice that says, Don't worry, I heard you. I'll show you how. Read the words of some of the people of prayer who have written for us over the centuries. In their struggles to learn to pray, you'll see yourself. Read your Bible and make it a habit like some people to do their jogging and their vitamins. You will learn to see it fresh each day. And no matter how long you live, You'll be surprised by it to the end of your days. November the 1st, 1998. Yes! Thank you! In Hosea 11, we find what might be summarized as the heart of the story. For in this scripture, we find that God's love is the center of the universe. Uh, he breathes life into ours. It is from him that we get life each day, not from ourselves. Because of that, our losses and our successes are not final, but they are not final and irreversible. They are not the heart of the story. Christ's life death and resurrection are. Now, if Jesus' resurrection is central, the ultimate loss of old age, death, is not the end of life, but a crucial turning point. The true meaning of each life is made clear, where all the meanings of the loose endings of life are Was the only hope I know and the true meaning of life. This is the heart of the story.
October 21st, 2001. There is power in prayer and there is power in the word of God. Combine these two dynamic sources with the power of the Holy Spirit and explosive spiritual energy is released in the believer's life resulting in a renewed faith, victory, and answered prayer. Jeremiah says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. This is God's telephone number. The principle behind this wonderful promise from God is quite simple. It is reaffirmed in the New Testament by James. He says, Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh to you. God always responds to believing prayer. In the next couple of months, we'll be looking at prayer as found in the prayer that prevails. This phenomenal power of prayer in the presence of God is released in a person's life when he learns to personalize the promises of the scriptures by offering them, now this is the scriptures, back to God through prayer. The results of this kind of praying are unlimited. The Bible reassures us that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Praying the word is effectual and avails much in the believer's life because it builds faith in his heart. It activates God's superpower to meet our needs. As we continue to study the different aspects of prayer, let us consider faith today. James 1 and 6 says, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. There is no doubt about it. We must ask in faith, not waver. We must, as the writer of Hebrews stated, believe that God is, and he is the rewarder of those that come to him in faith. The scriptures are clear about this. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Jesus put it this way. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye ask when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Mark 11, 24. God has given us many promises. He is faithful and trustworthy. Our responsibility is to respond to his ability to do what he says. Faith tells us God cannot fail. Nothing is impossible with God. Unless we activate that faith in our hearts, however, God is not able to move. Let me repeat that. Unless we activate that faith in our hearts, God is not able to move. One writer says, faith goes up the stairs that love has made and looks out of the windows which hope has opened. July 28th, 2002. Worship the Lord with gladness. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve or worship the Lord with gladness. The psalmist here is telling us how we should perform our duties and privileges to the Lord. Do you find yourself worshiping God with a sad countenance as if it is unpleasant? God would have us dressed up with joy. The angels worship with songs, not groans. Remember, cheerfulness is the support of our strength. And let us show the world that we worship the Lord with gladness, not a religion of slavery, that it is a delight and a joy. We serve and worship a good master. So let's go forth this day and worship him with gladness. June 24, 2001. This is a new 